This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hello. Um, today, we are we are recording this in daylight this sunshine. Daylight. Very strange. Yeah. And I am looking a little bit glammed up because I've spent today having a photo shoot. Hmm. For my business, a professional photo shoot. And I, yeah, feel like... Um, Very nice, you look lovely. Thanks. I did my face myself, I did my hair myself, I dressed myself. It's all good. <laughs> and well um, for a change, you had a bad hair day, didn't you, for the photo shoot? Yeah, look at this, look at this thing. What's going on here? This is like a lot, a lot of good lumpy bits going on. It's nice. amazing. Um, yeah, so there was lots of lots of panicking and worry about Joe's hair earlier. Which oh, disaster, amazing. disaster. Because we had a um, podcast photo shoot as well. It was cool. Right then, what are we drinking? We are drinking uh, seed lip, fake gin and tonic. Yeah, which kind of does taste a bit like gin and tonic, doesn't it? It tastes a bit like gin and tonic. I would, I would prefer it... See, see it's like... It's like um, Vegetarian sausages, when I prefer a vegetarian sausage to be a vegetarian sausage, not a fake meaty sausage. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And like a spicy bean burger is a good thing, and they're generally much better than f- vegetarian fake beef burgers. But good ones are really good. And I feel a little bit like this with uh, seed lip. I quite like the seed lip, but I don't think it's very very gin. Okay. Well, to me, it tastes quite a lot like gin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's just an adult drink. Yeah, which is cool. Could be just cool. its own thing. Yeah, all right, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. And we're not drinking booze because it's like two o'clock in the afternoon or something. And we're both going training later and mm. booze and training does not mix. So Not good. And also, I don't really drink booze anymore. <laughs> anyway, today we are... Oh, this is... Oh my God, this is our 200th episode. Oh, good Lord. I know, right? If only we had party poppers and balloons. You know what? I was going to do all that stuff, and I was like, "Oh!" But do you see in the in the background of the video, if you're watching the video, there's my giant finger. Hang on, hang on. There is a candle. <laughs> it's not a it's, massive celebration, is it? Really? Oh, it's my um, it's my Sarah Miller super posh candle. It smells really nice. It's a scented candle. Anyway, happy two hundredth. Happy two hundredth episode. Happy birthday to episodes. us. Yeah. Can you believe it? Mental. I know, right? So yes, it's our 200th episode uh, this week, and we are doing nothing special to market, <laughs> <laughs> except for singing a little bit just now. Mm, not so much. Right, what are you reading, Joe? Uh, well, I've <laughs> successfully read all of the things that you've put in front of me to distract me from reading The Wheel of Time. So, you're back so now it. I'm back reading The Wheel of Time. <laughs> By Robert Jordan. By Robert Jordan, which one day I will finish and never have to read again because I'm now on like book 53 and I'm actually getting a bit bored of it. Oh, are you? Well, this is why I was putting other books in front of you because I thought you need to break it up a little bit. The problem is now it's also convoluted and complicated and I've read half a dozen books halfway through reading this thing that I'm now a little bit lost. Okay. Well, I'm reading. So I think in the last episode, I said I was about to start reading How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. Mm-hmm. I've almost finished How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison, And it's brill. It's a book of short stories. It's her short stories. And they're all fantasy or sci-fi stories. And they're fab. So for instance, they're really thought-provoking as well. So for instance, one of them was a short story based in the um, stone obelisk, Stone Eater world. Okay. Yeah. So that was kind of, it was about Ica and um, mm-hmm. somebody else. Uh, but the one that I've just read, for example, um, was all about what would happen if there was a quantum pr- proliferation and we all ended up in little pocket universes. Nice. And so it would reset every so many hours. And it was it was creepy and thought provoking. And it's given me a whole bunch of ideas for short stories as well that I could perhaps write. <laughs> so that was good. But part of the reason I was reading it is because I want to write fiction and I wanted to start with short stories. And I thought... I don't actually read that many short stories. Mm. I should probably read some. Um, Plus, I love N.K. Jemisin. Um, So that was a really good one. There's been one about... um, There's just loads, like gods and goddesses and um, the different roles, you know, what the roles death has. Oh, there was one about death. And I think all the humans in the world had died, but all of the gods, like, from every culture everywhere were still alive and living in New York for some reason. Um, But that was quite cool because it was from the point of view of death, as in the anthropomorphic, you know 
<laughs> skeleton with scythe mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, and yeah, just some thought-provoking stuff about technology as well and how technology might be used or abused or changed. That's cool. Hmm. And uh, a couple of them made me think about the short story that Stephen King wrote about Kindles mm-hmm. when the Kindle first came out. And he wrote a really... So it was like you would have, have your Kindle, but you could access any work of fiction from any time or place or anywhere in the universe, even stuff that hasn't been written. I think it's been a while since I've read it, but that, I really like that as well. That was the kind of short story that I read and thought, damn, I wish I'd written that because hmm. it was just such a good idea. So, uh, yeah, so that's the fiction I'm reading. And the nonfiction I'm reading is The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Nice. And I am about two thirds of the way through that. And I don't know, not really sure how I feel about it. It's, it's, it's really, it's good. I like it. Um, but I have to kind of take note that I am from a very different world from her. So she is an extremely wealthy um, New Yorker living in Manhattan with her husband and right. two kids. And she's not, I don't want to say she's like super privileged. Or, well, she is super privileged, obviously she is. Um, but she's not. she doesn't come across as obnoxious or anything. But you do have to read it with, with that in mind that she's writing from that place mm-hmm. um, and that situation. But a lot of the stuff that she's writing about is perfectly applicable to you know, anybody from any background and in any situation. It's good. It's full of good ideas about how you can be happier. Um, Like we did our photo book. That was an idea that came from that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's cool. Right then, 15 reasons to write a book. That's what we're talking about this week. Really? Yeah. Okay, go. Go. You go. I've lost my notes. You've lost the notes. Where are the notes? (laughs) Here they are. Okay, so... If you have ever thought about writing a book, and if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't ever thought about writing a book, then I'm surprised because I bang on about it a lot. Banging on. (laughs) Um, But you never quite got started, then you're not alone because I think that happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would give you 15 reasons why we think you should write a book in 2020. Because 2020 can be the year you write your book, I reckon. Joe, what's the first reason? To become a better writer and communicator. Yes. Uh, if you're a business owner, a human being, uh, which you probably are, I guess. Um, <laughs> good. Hi, for one. Welcome, our robot overlords. <laughs> you know, great written communication skills are a good thing and will last you forever. I love, I love how Joe is trying really hard not to read my notes. For I know. <laughs> Try not to read the notes. <laughs> and and sound a lot like you're reading the notes. But it is true, because we all have to write to everybody all the time. Yes. In one way or another. Uh, mm, Emails, texts. Yeah. You know, just general notes that you scroll to your partners, kids, whatever. Pick up the fucking towels. If you're writing things down. Passive aggressive notes to your flatmates. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you're writing things down without an eye to communicating, then uh, why are you writing them down? Yes. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to write, if you write a book, if you go through the process of writing a book, you will become a better writer just mm-hmm. by just by just by doing it, doing it. Um, and yeah, and it will serve you elsewhere in life as well. So whether you want to sell your products and services, whether you want to go on a date with somebody, whether you want to persuade you know your kids to clean their room, um, writing a book helps you to get your thoughts clear and your vocabulary clear, and it helps you to to present your ideas coherently. Mm-hmm. Helps you to you will talk better if you write better. Talking better in it. Talking better. Um, yeah, you will improve your speaking skills as well. Because writing things down means that you have to clarify. You couldn't, you know, if you if you'd looked at the transcript of this podcast, there would be a lot of pauses like that one while I while I searched for a word. There would be a lot of ums and ers, as you know, we've used filler words and things. You know. There would be way too many you knows, which is my least favourite thing about myself, and <laughs> so's as well. And that's the kind of thing that you will get rid of when you write. Sure. And it improves your speaking as well. <laughs> Not that you would know that from listening to me. <laughs> Second reason that we think you should write a book in 2020 is it's really hard. So just doing something for the sake of it being difficult. Yeah. Oof. It's, it's, I, I kind of write a lot about how hard it is to write a book, which I think sets me apart a little bit from other people who um, are selling you book related products and things. I never claim it's easy. It mm-hmm. is not easy. Um, and nor should it be, I don't think. It's a, it's a big thing to do. And also, I think it's really important to do hard things. Yes. Really important. You will discover you are capable of so much more than you think that, than you think you are. I learned a new word the other day, by the way, called misogi. I've utterly mangled the pronunciation of that. I'm sure, I'm sure it's Japanese. It's probably not an O, it's probably an O. Miso- misogi. Oh, yeah, that would make sense, yeah. 
yeah, Miss Oggy. I'm like now relying on Rob and Julian to get in touch and be like, for fuck's sake, you've totally mangled that word. Um, it dates back to 8th century Japan and it originally described a mythical taboo journey to the underworld, mm-hmm. which also I found really fascinating because it shows you how much all of our myths and legends are related. It's all a bit Orpheus, isn't it? It's all a bit Orpheus and sticks. Um, but it came to mean a bit later. It came to mean the ascetics' painful but purifying deeds. They would stand under waterfalls and chant for hours, apparently. That sounds horrific. Okay. Don't want to do that. But these days, apparently some people do a bit of a modern version. So once a year, you do something you're really not sure you can do. And before they start, most people aren't sure they can write a book, but yeah. they absolutely can. Um, whether you will or not is up to you. Okay. I think I think it's um, it's cool. It's, it's good to do hard things because it shows you what you're capable of. I quite like the idea of standing under waterfalls. You go for it. You should do that. You should do that. I'm not doing that. You know how much I hate being cold. <laughs> I really hate being cold. Um, reason number three. Um, you have a story to tell and it is worth telling. Yes, it is. It should be told. Um, most people... At least, but most people I think their stories... I can't are, convert it all into... That's, you could just say mo- most people think their stories are boring because they yeah. do. Like, most Drayton people. Bird was writing his autobiography and I was helping him. Name drop, name drop. And he was convinced that nobody would find his story interesting. And I'm like... Dude, you've had the most incredibly random and chaotic and fascinating and naughty life. Available on Amazon. It is available on Amazon. You did what? By Drayton Bird. Go buy it. And it's just, I was just like, apart from anything else, how can you possibly think that anybody would find that boring? They might not like parts of it and they might think, you know, parts of it are totally scandalous. And there is one woman on Amazon who was utterly horrified by the whole thing. Really? Um, Yeah. Outraged. Sleaze! Oof. But she's a professional um, one starer. I went and had a look at her. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> neither here nor there. Uh, but yeah. Everyone's got to have a hobby. <laughs> they do. They do. Some people, no, seriously though, some people's hobby is giving bad reviews. Yeah. So your story is familiar to you. Just because it's familiar to you and boring to you doesn't mean it's familiar to everybody else. Mm-hmm. My life is really normal to me, but when I tell other people that I'm like a trapeze person and stuff, they're like, what? You've got three sheep, what? You're, you know what I mean? And I'm like, it's just my life. Sheep, chickens, circus. Snake. Snake. Book writing. Um, book writing. Yeah. So you don't get to decide what other people find interesting. You don't get to decide what value people get from your stories or what you write or what you sell, in fact. You don't get to decide that. Other people get to decide that. Mm. Um, Which, by the way, is a big mindset shift. So if you struggle with your self-worth, just remember, you don't get to decide how much the stuff you put out into the world is worth. That's not up to you. It's it's up to the people who use it and buy it and read it and watch it. It's up to them. And that's that's quite a, a fun thing to remind yourself of. So what if your story, the story that you are reluctant to tell, what if your story could help somebody massively improve their life? Is it not selfish to withhold it from them? Mm -hmm. I think so. So tell your story. Tell your story. Yeah, it's worth telling. Reason number four. Um, The kind of people you want to work, the kind of people you want to work will gravitate towards you. I've missed a word out. You've missed a word out. I'm like a newsreader. You put the words up. Wait there, listener. Go again. The kind of people you want to work with will gravitate towards you. <laughs> I'm fairly sure. I'm fairly sure you could have you could have figured that out. <laughs> I could have done. I just thought I would, you know, interject a little comedy moment of ineptitude. Good. My ineptitude, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you put your book in people's hands, in the, the type of people's hands who are your ideal customers, they are gonna want if if they enjoy your book, if they enjoy what you're giving them, they are gonna want to work with you. They're going to want to be in your world. They're, wanting, they're going to want to get to know you, be closer to you, and they will love you for the fact that you're putting your story out into the world and that you're wanting to help them. Yes. And this has totally worked for you, hasn't it? Yeah. The people who come to you, having read one of your books, mm. are usually they're like well-prepared. They know how it's all going to work. They, they like your style. They feel like they know you. And yeah. They stick around. The relationship they are goes really well. incredibly valuable to me, not just... Not just in terms of their long-term customers and lifetime customer value and all that stuff, but because they're people that I like. I want Mm. to know them. I want to work with them. Like the people in my superheroes group who have been with me for years and people who have left and stayed in touch with me. I love those people. They're they're fantastic. We get on really, really well. Um, We talk about interesting things. They teach me stuff all the time. Mm. And it's just brilliant. So, You know, it's a a filter, isn't it? Yeah, it's It's also a a filter, yeah. the, The people who are not going to get on with you that you don't want to work with, they're probably going to read your book and go, 
Don't like her. Don't like her. And that's that, you know? Yeah. Nobody wastes any more time. No. And that's probably the last I'll hear about it as well. So, you know, they won't have to be bugged by me any further than they already have been. And I won't have to hear them, you know, mm. say stuff that might upset me. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it's great. It's it's a real... It's It acts as both a barrier and... Not a barrier. It's, well, it, it's, it polarises, doesn't it? Yeah. It filters. It's, a, it's a filter. Yeah, it polarises without being obnoxious. I'm not a big fan of deliberately being obnoxious to kind of push people away. Some people that works really well for and, you know, Hi, good John. luck to them. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm not a fan. That's not me. I'm not yeah. somebody who goes out of their way to be obnoxious. You just want to work with people whose company you enjoy. Yeah. And just, just telling your story, just being yourself will do that for you with, without upsetting anyone, without pissing people off massively. Yeah, yeah, sure. You can, you know, piss people off in a quiet way so that they just go away rather than send you hate mail. <laughs> I like that. Um, reason number five to write a book is experts write books. Okay. So if you look at all the most successful persons, peoples, in various industries, I don't know what happened then, I'm tired, um, you will find most of them have written a book. It's okay. a really great way to position yourself as an expert. It's a really great way. If you think about the phrase, they wrote the book on it. Yeah. They, they know their stuff. They do. Reason number six. Uh, I think we just mentioned this really. A book can be a shortcut to intimacy. Um, your book is a brilliant way to be, bring people into your world. And yes, of course, you want to keep building relationships with all the other stuff you do, the articles, the emails, the videos, the podcasts. Um, but when someone sits down to read your book, they really get like into your brain. They really understand you at the end of that book. And especially if you do audio stuff as well, like if you do podcasts or video, they will read your book in your voice. Mm-hmm. They'll hear your voice while you're reading it. And if you do an audio book, that's even better. Because then they can hear it in your voice. Then they can hear it in your voice. And if you also think about where people read books as well. I read books in the bath and in bed. And uh, Some people read books on the toilet. You don't get much more intimate than that. So yeah, you, and, and that, it sounds like I'm being funny, but I'm not. Because that does build intimacy. It's like if you take a book to bed with you and you read it, it's, there's that, it's like I'm taking somebody into my safe space. You know, the, your bed is the, is the place where you're supposed to be, you know, safe and cocooned and all the rest of it. So, yeah. Um, reason number seven, you will become more of an expert than you already are. In writing your book, you will discover holes in your knowledge and you will work to fill them. You will become better at what you do because you will find that, oh, I'm not quite sure if I'm right about this. Or, oh, it looks like that's changed since the last time I... Mm, you will do some research. You will learn some more. Yes, exactly. For sure. Reason number eight. Uh, it's a huge confidence boost. Mm-hmm. Um, holding, you know, you've got a book in your hand. It's it's the it's the mark of your legitimacy. It's a big endorsement that you're an expert. Other people can take it and go, "Ooh, we're in a book." Yeah. You know, it's and and you are. It does elevate you from someone who hasn't written a book to someone who has. Someone who has. I mean, that's, that's, that's that. weird. <laughs> weird but true. <laughs> and. Also, if you, because like a lot of people say to me when I suggest that they might want to write a book, I don't know enough. Hmm. And one of my mentors, Peter, um, always used to say, You're pushing me out of shot, I think. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just get out. Um, always used to say, If you could talk on a subject for an hour, you can absolutely write a book on it. All right. And he's right. You can. Um, reason number nine um, It opens doors you might not otherwise encounter. Yes. So event organisers love authors. Uh, You'll be more likely to be invited to speak or interviewed in the media if you have a book you can send to people. Mm -hmm. Um, And it gives you something to pitch people with other than just an email or a phone call. Yeah. Nice. Reason number 10. Um, It makes you memorable. In a room full of people handing out business cards, you've got your book. Uh, People will recognise that. They will notice that. And you are differentiating yourself. Yeah, it may it actually gets you a really cool reaction because I remember I don't really go to networking events very much, but um, when I have done and I've taken my book with me, people are like, "What? Wow, you're giving me a book, really?" Hmm. And I'm like, "Yeah, take it." They're like, "Wow, thank you." And it's it's really cool. And they don't they don't forget you. I might not always work with them, but you know they will tell other people about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, for the right reasons. <laughs> um, reason number eleven: um, a book makes you immortal. Right. Not really. Um, no, really. It, it will be around, it will be around long after you shuffle off. It will yeah. be accessible. It will exist. Yeah. Um, if your book moves and helps moves and helps people, 
um, changes their lives, then, you know, you've got a legacy, haven't you? And in case you're wondering, oh, well, my book won't because, you know, what if I don't sell a bazillion copies? You don't need to. If your book has an ISBN, which it absolutely should if you're doing it properly, it will, you will end up having a copy sent to the British Library because every single book that is ever written... With an ISBN. With an ISBN, the British Library has a copy of. Does it? Yeah. That's cool. It is cool, isn't it? It's the, the British Library is a depository of human... I say ever, ever written, I think, in the UK. Right. So, um, UK-based books. But I, I love that about the British Library. I just think it's super cool. They just have one of everything. Yeah, which is great. And I think other. I think it goes to some other um, kind of storage um, cache. I've forgotten the words. <sighs> Depositories is the word I was looking for. Book depository. Yeah, that kind of thing. Not the book depository that sells books. Anyway, uh, reason number 12. Oh, you'll discover more about who you are, who you want to be, what you really want to do in life. Writing a book is like a big process. You will sit and you will think and you will learn. Yeah. And a lot of that thinking and learning and, and developing will be on on your own opinion of yourself and what you want and how, how you want the future to be. Yeah. And, you know, you might start writing your outline and think, Ugh, I really don't want to do this. And you might figure out that the reason you don't want to do it is because you're actually doing the wrong thing. Mm. And so it can, it can help you figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it. Uh, reason number 13. Um, pretty clearly, this is one of the ones that people are like most interested in, I guess. Um, you'll make more money. Yes, you will. It's very nice to have growth and development and morality and memorability and legacy and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but, you know, hopefully you're listening to this podcast because you run a business um, and you want to make money. Yeah. You need you to pay the bills. You need to be profitable. And if you write and publish a book it will give you not just the confidence to charge more but the proof behind you to help you reach the kind of customers who are willing to pay more for what you offer Mm -hmm. Um, and they will get better results from what you do as well because there is a lot of research to show that if people pay more they are more likely to do what's needed and get value from it so this doesn't always hold true but it does often Mm -hmm. Um, reason number 14 a book is absolutely by far in my humble but correct opinion the best way to share an idea or a story that matters okay because tv and radio and film and the internet are all great they're fantastic things but i think that books are still they still endure longer they Mm -hmm. they they feel like they have a lot kind of longevity because they're real they're a thing that you can touch and hold yeah and whilst you know whilst tv certainly film i think you know hollywood and all the rest of it the big films, yeah, they're always probably going to be around. Um, but again, they're kind of dependent on technology. Books are not dependent on technology. If in the event of the zombie apocalypse... We're going to be back to relying on books. We're going to be back to relying on books again. So, yeah. And, you know, all the slight, slight silliness aside, um, we do tend to still think of books as something a little bit special. Mm. And they are, I think. so. And reason number 15. Uh, you will become a better thinker. Writing things down helps you figure out what you really think of things. Yeah. Um, to write clearly, you have to think clearly, and writing is a vehicle that will help you do that. Yeah, and you've just said that today, haven't you? Because you um, left your laptop at work, didn't you? And you're working from home. I'm today. working from home, but my laptop's in the office. I'm like, oh, that was a mistake. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been having calls. I've been talking to people. I've done planning. I've used paper and drawn pictures and... Network diagrams and things. And have um, you found it's made a difference to how you thought about things? I've actually spent more time thinking about things and less time sort of crashing around in technology. Yeah. However, having said that, there have been times where I've been like, I don't have access to this data. So I need to I need to assess how I manage my data, I think. But does that make you think, oh, maybe I should put aside a little bit more time to plan For stuff on paper? Blank pieces of paper, yeah. 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 That's cool. So sometimes... Slight tangent, um, when the fuckening occurs, <laughs> I love that word, I, f- I found a meme the other day, the fuckening, when everything is going really great and then something goes wrong, there it is, that's the fuckening. Right. Um, which, you know, happened to you today when you're like, oh, everything was great, I'm going to be working from home but I haven't got my laptop. Yes. Um, so when that happens, it's like, actually, it's kind of a good thing because it's given you an insight into how you can work and mm. how you can work differently and better. So, cool. Right then, I could come up with a thousand good reasons to write a book, um, I guess, and there's 15 really good reasons there. But the most important reason, I think, for you to write a book is because you want to. So if you want to write a book, 
please don't let fear or doubt or any of that stuff stop you because there is loads of stuff that you can grab to help you. Mm -hmm. I've got, if you go to my website, moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash blog, I've got tons of articles on there about how to get started, how to come up with ideas, creativity, mindset stuff, um, writer's block, you know, the blank page of doom, all that kind of thing. There's shed loads of stuff on there for free. There's loads of podcasts here. Many podcasts. Many podcasts. There's also loads of other good podcasts available. And I've written a book. This one, in fact, called How the Hell Do You Write a Book? <laughs> and this book, I'm really, really pleased with. Um, mm -hmm. This book will walk you through how to write and self-publish your own book. And it is being launched this week. In fact, it will have just been launched. Um, the launch period is for the whole of February. So if you haven't bought a copy yet, grab yourself a copy, either from my website. Um, you can go to howtheheldoyouwriteabook.com and that will take you to the right place. Or you can go to Amazon and grab yourself a copy. Um, but then you need to go to the URL. Well, you need to go to the, the howtheheldoyouwriteabook.com URL because that will tell you exactly what to do to claim your launch bonuses. <gasps> There's some cool swag available for people who buy, buy the book in the next month. Anybody who has already bought the book will get some cool swag as well, because I'm not punishing people for, you know, being cool and buying the book before it was officially launched. Uh, but yeah, go buy the book, howtheheldoyouwriteabook.com. Nice. Go and have a look at my blog if you want uh, loads of cool free stuff uh, to help you write your book. And next week, I have no idea what we're talking about. I reckon we'll just make it up. Probably. We'll be talking about writing books. <laughs> Don't know exactly what yet. All right. Yeah. Something. Yeah. We'll think of something. We'll think of something, yeah. Uh, if you like this podcast, please go and give us a good rating on iTunes. Five stars. Five stars. Um, and subscribe on iTunes as well. It helps other people find us and it makes us smile. And if you've listened to every episode, you total lunatic, drop me an email at vicky at vickyfraser.com and send me your postal address and I will send you a silly gift. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back same time next week. Thanks, Joe. No worries. Thank you, Podfly. Thank you, Harriet. Harriet has been amazing this past couple of weeks helping me with the book launch. Thanks, Harriet. Harriet, you're amazing. Um, right. Off. Let's go. We're done. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm -hmm.